the things about Science of Life, and then I'd say also as your work with Brand Nubian as solo artist, your features, everything, is your, regardless of what you're talking about, being able to drop in some of this knowledge and wisdom that you've done throughout your career. But as you've uh, gotten older, a lot of the, the themes and messages are similar to what you were saying in the 90s. It's just with a different twist and a different style. So why are these universal truths of life so hard for people to grasp, to comprehend, and to act on? Because the way the world is set up, like it's not set up for them to act on that. Like this, the, the, this, this world and what's going on is based on the here and now. It's based on what, what, what can you do for me right now? It's based on the, um, you come in every year, it's a couple of rappers come in, they fit the suit for a little while, and then uh, they don't fit the suit no more, and it moves on. So, you know, it's, it's just based on the last of power. The lessons that I'm giving now is the lessons I gave back then. It's just uh, I try to uh, update them, you know, keep them relevant to today's society. I try to, um, you know, um, make them accessible and make them understandable to, to, to people of today. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the, uh, that is the interesting thing about life <laughs> is how so few people, uh, do truly understand. And, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a sad reality. Um, but ironically, like you said, with the lessons and even, even if you go to it, the uh, the five percent of the world that's not a lot of people that really know what's going on regardless of <laughs> what it is but yeah. I, it's uh it's sad and i always wonder yeah. if that if that number is actually too high <laughs> yeah well i mean like like i say man like you see a lot of stuff and you wonder at and you wonder where people's minds are and you know you 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 you, you try to deal with everybody but like i said man like you're not gonna save everybody if I throw the message out there and 30 people catch it, then that's 30 people that saved, man. You know, and um, that's that at this point, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to save myself, save my babies. Maybe if I can reach a message to a couple of people that can come along, hey, I'm, I'm with that. And like, like I said previously, like everybody's not going to get the message and everybody may get the message in their own way. Right. Well, on a related note, on a player shit from a science of life, the line in there, you were talking about how the dude owed you money, and it wasn't about the money per se. It was the principle of it. And I think that's also important because a lot of people, whether you give somebody $50 or $500, it's like, yo, man, you know you got it or you can get it. Why aren't you giving it back? <laughs> and then exactly. You I mean, that's like, that's basic sound like, like if, if, if I did something for you, I did a service for you, helped you out in some way, like I did that on, on the good faith. If I did it, especially me if i did it that that mean i felt that you was a person worthy of that and and that you know like i did it because i felt that you were strong enough and we had enough close enough bond that you would repay me or or do whatever needed to be done uh as as far as um giving it back man and it's like hey man like i i, I still need that back and it's if it's five dollars if, if it's a dollar that I gave you, it's, it's, it's not the money, it's the principle. The principle is that I helped you out at the time and I, and I ain't press you on it. If I ain't press you on it, like, but I didn't forget about it either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, also with Science of Life too, there's the, um, on the Tell em song, I thought it was interesting about how you were talking about sometimes you sleep with the lights on and not trusting anybody and stuff like that. Um what made you do that, uh, sleep with the lights on in particular? Well, and, and that's a true thing. Like, I've been involved in situations, home invasions, this and that, where, you know, like, people that I thought I trusted, I, they, they, they betrayed my trust. And the way that it's set up now and what they promote, like, you do all these videos and you promote uh, home invasions and, and stuff, robberies and stuff. Like, I don't trust nobody. I don't, I don't, at this point, if I don't meet nobody no more, and don't bring nobody to my house that I don't know. My house is my kingdom. My baby is in my house. So, you know, I will defend that to the fullest. You understand? Like, it ain't like the old days. You can have the door open and people come in and out. And, you know, people's motives and, and ways now we see as with rappers and, and certain other people, 
it'll be the person that you trusted the most that'll cross you. You understand? So, like I said, I don't trust nobody. Um, I don't want to meet nobody. And don't bring nobody to my crib. At this point, if I never meet another new friend again, I'm good. Hmm. And has that been a, a long time thing or is that more recent for you? Well, it, it's, 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 it's been coming, but it's more recent now being by the, the actions of this world, seeing people get crossed by their friends. The girl from Charlotte who went down to, to Mexico and got killed, she went down there with her friends. She ain't had no idea that they was going to be the ones to, to, to cross her and take her life. So like nowadays, like you, you, you can't trust really nobody. Like the people I trust is people that I grew up since, went since day one. I have a couple of new associates and they became associates because of a trial and error uh, process. I gave, I, if I give you the rope and, and you choke on the rope, then hey man, you're going to, you, you, you finish. But if I give you the rope and you, you handle the rope good and I see we can work out, then I'll pull you in with it. But other than that, man, like I said, I don't really got to meet no new, but no people. Right. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a powerful statement and also a real one, but uh, with science of life too, as you talk about uh, your children, babies is one of my favorite songs on there. And I also like to beyond talking about your daughters. I like the fact that you were talking about how you always had milk in your cereal because, you know, in rap, I think it's become, so common or normal like oh i didn't have anything or whatever yeah. but, but you made a point to say that you did have stuff i mean not that you were rich by any means but that you know you had milk in your cereal it wasn't something so why was that important for you to say it was important for for me to say because i think as a lot of times that's become a crutch in hip-hop oh i was poor i didn't have anything i was you know and and, and in my mind i'm like well maybe your people wasn't hustling right you understand? Maybe your people didn't have the formula, you know, like don't, don't, don't. Everybody wasn't like that. You understand? A lot of us came up and we had because our peoples had the knowledge and the, and the, and the foremost access to be like, yo, I'm going to go and do mine. It's like I always had, you know, I wasn't lacking for anything and it's nothing wrong with that. It, but if you did grow up poor or whatever like that, Hey man, that's on you. And a lot of times it was due to the circumstances, but maybe your people wasn't hustling right. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they they didn't have the formula. Yeah. Well, also on Babies too, tied into that, you also are talking about how now you own stocks and different things, which I think is uh, admirable to say, but also it's important, as you were saying, with the different money stream or income streams, that people look beyond... Uh, materialistic possessions to try to get passive income, to get assets, all these different things. So with you is uh, stocks and other types of investments. Is that, how did you get into that? Well, just by, um, you know, listening, like a lot of times you got to be able to listen and, and take advice from people. And, you know, I'm not going to divulge exactly what I'm doing, but I'm doing a couple of things, man. And it's like at a certain point in time, man, like, the, the material things, you know, they don't mean nothing. I was looking at, uh, listening to somebody like one of the young boys, Jeezy, and Jeezy said, I, I got property all over Atlanta. And then, and in the long run, that's going to matter. When you get 65, 70 years old and your babies is going 50 something, that chain ain't going to matter no more because that's going, that's going to decrease in devalue and, you know, all that stuff you put in the watch or you put in the Rolex. First of all, when you, whenever you touch a Rolex and put anything in it, that devalues the watch off the rip. You understand what I'm saying? Like the watch wasn't made for you to do all that stuff too. But, you know, I understand it's the times or whatever, but, you know, you just got to, and, and that comes with age and maturity with some. Some never get that maturity. And like I said, everybody ain't going to make it to the finish line. Yeah. And with the finish line of Babies too, the song splits and has a different beat and it's got singing at the end and all that so creatively structurally why did you want to do that that way well that was my man soul and doughboy and them they put that in there like on this album what i wanted to do i was like i'm gonna just i'm gonna do the rhymes and i'm gonna do this and that but i want to get y'all ear on it because see sometimes as an artist it's hard for you to give up like if you're riding the horse it's hard for you to give up the reins sometimes on this album, I kind of gave up the reins and I was like, as a fan, what would y'all want to hear? 
and what would y'all want to do? I'm a rhyme on this, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna let y'all do what y'all doing. If I like it, we rock with it. If I don't, we'll come back around and we'll switch it. But I wanted to get an, another ear on this project because a lot of my projects, I felt sometimes I was one sided on the beats and one sided on the rhymes. I wanted to get an overall. I wanted to have a family collective on this one. Hmm. Okay, got it. Now, also with Science of Life, you got the everything I'm supposed to get. And you're talking about uh, being the return of Franklin from Snowfall. So what about that character appeals to you and made you want to say that? Well, first of all, I was a fan in the show. And, you know, like F Franklin fell for a little while. But like on this next year, you see, I got a feeling he's going to return. Like on the last episodes, like before it ended, he, he was putting his self back in place. Like I'm the return of Franklin. You know, Snowfall, I don't claim to know it all. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a, I'm a return. Like, I'll take the Hawks back court. That's uh, Trey Young and DeJounte Murray in Black Thought. So I'm going to take the Hawks back court in Black Thought. I'm the return of Franklin. Snowfall, I don't claim to know it all. You understand? I, I never said I know it all. And if, 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 I have to if I give you the angle, I have to kill you. And I don't know what fulfills you. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So I just wanted to play on words and do something like I'm a fan of the show. I'm a fan of Franklin, you know, the actor, you know, so that's what it was. Yeah, that was a, an amazing, amazing section of rhyme. So I really mm -hmm. like that. Um, also on there, you talk about the pain of your uh, daughter going to Brooklyn and not being around. So, you know, as you reflect and you repair your relationship with her and different things, how does that pain and frustration uh, apply to trying to have a better relationship? Like, how does that make you adjust approaching your daughter, dealing with her, interacting with her? Well, what that does is it makes me look at look into myself. And, and it makes me think of, well, in, in, instead of arguing with, with the baby's mother, what can I do to kind of repair this? Because I, I do want to see my daughter and I miss my daughter and, I'm, and I miss the baby's mother. So, you know, sometimes... You have to separate to come back together. But in that separation time, if you really meant to be together, then you have to repair yourself. What can I do to repair this? Certain things can I fall back on? It's a push and pull thing. Certain things, I'm, oh, well, maybe I won't push this issue as much this time. And maybe I'll bend on this issue this time just to create that perfect family setting. Because um, it's, it's, it's never a perfect setting, but you want to try to get it as as close to that as possible. Gotcha. Okay. And Science of Life 2 also features a couple tracks produced by Rock Marciato, including everything I'm supposed to get. So uh, seeing his rise, seeing what he's doing uh, lyrically and production-wise, what have you kind of taken from him or learned from him? Well, first of all, I've known Rock for a long time, at least about 13, 14 years. And I remember I did a rhyme cipher with him, and he was rhyming. And like, I don't think people got him then. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't think people really got him then. Like, they, I guess they was looking at him like, what, what, what is he saying? Like, how is this correlating? But in my mind, I know I said, son, he, he got something. Something about him uh, attracted to me. And I was like, I think he's going to do something. And, he, and if you've if noticed him, like a lot of people is up on rock now and this and that. Rock had a slow grind. You understand? He's been grinding. It, this 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 didn't come to him. He put the work in for this. You understand? And like, that's what attracted me. And I was like, now is his time. See, if you in it long enough, you're going to get your 15 minutes of fame. It's what you do after that to remain. You know what I'm saying? And like, he's he he he, he grinded it out. And now he's getting his 15 minutes of fame. He's uh, uh, recognized as a father of this type of style, a style that he's always been doing. But now it's cool. You know what I'm saying? Now it's cool. But I've seen that from the beginning. Yeah, he's immensely talented. Um, oh, yeah. And with Burning Sands that he also produced, one of my, my favorite part of that is when you were, did the thing about Ruben Stuttered and you were stuttered. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing about that that so stands out is I think now, not everything and not every song, of course, but so much of rap is just getting in that pocket and flowing that one way. People aren't speeding up and slowing down and use pausing like they used to do. So uh, what made you right there want to take that little switch and change it up like that? 
it was just the feel of the music. You understand? I go with the music and I try to use my voice as an instrument. And that was just something that came into my head. Like, you know, Ruben started and it sounded like stuttered to me. So I tried to play on words because like I said, like rap is still theatrics. It's still fun. And you're supposed to have fun with it and still do what you do and create your lane. When you look at rap as a whole, uh, rap is about 60 years old, per se, how they say. But it's it's different chambers still being formed. It, it's still, in, in terms of music, in its infancy. You look at uh, compositions by Chopin, uh, um, Beethoven, this person. Those are two, three hundred years old. You understand? So I think rap is still finding chambers and it's still defining itself. You understand? I think that we're still in the beginning. 300 years from now, I, I'll be thought of back as, as, as in the beginning chambers, you understand? So it's still room to play around with it and um and, and make your way. When I was coming up, I loved Kane. I loved Cool G Rap. I loved KRS-One, but I didn't want to be them. Like a lot of time, I think these kids, and it's a new dynamic, uh, they love the Migos, uh, YNY, the young boy, uh, uh, this group and that group. And I think that they feel that because it's so promoted on social media that I have to be like that to win. You understand? And then this rap thing, man, it's become so flooded now. Like every year, it's a couple of people that fit the suit. And then it's a lot that don't fit the suit. Rap is a bubble right now. It's about right now, I would say, if it was a bubble, I say maybe it might be 100 people in that bubble and everybody's trying to get into that bubble. You understand? I'm not trying to get into that bubble. I'm trying to make my own lane. And since rap is still defining itself, I'm trying to make my own lane in this thing. I want you to listen real close to me. I'm going to ask you some real simple questions and I want some real simple answers. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand? Yes, I, I understand. You said that you couldn't have possibly been at the crime scene at 11.15 because you went to the bookstore my, my audio book and my hardcover book at 11.15 when the crime scene occurred in Soren's book. The history of gangster rap. So you couldn't have been at the crime scene because you were buying the books. Right, right. At 11.15, I was, I was at the bookstore at, at 11.15 and when, when I, bought, I bought the books and accidentally left them at the store. So at 11.15, you couldn't have been at the crime scene because you were buying books, right? At, at 11.15, I was, we, we was, when I was leaving, it was, it was some people coming in, and I, I, I forgot to grab But you, you, you don't remember who what they looked like. What they looked like or nothing, right? No. Hmm. So. Twelve fifteen. You went to the bookstore buying my audio book and hardcover book and Soren's book at twelve fifteen. So you couldn't have been at the scene because you were buying the books, right? Yeah, at twelve exactly at twelve at twelve fifteen exactly. I was at the bookstore. <laughs> right. Now you see. You know you're not fucked up. Which, which no, one? First you said you were at the bookstore at 11.15 and then you said you was 12.15. You know you're not fucked up, man. He fucked up. Yeah, he fucked up. He fucked up. Man, you, you confusing me, man. So, you get my book, my audio book, 40 years 
in Soren's book, History of Gangster Rap, and if you don't, you know you're not fucked up, right? Man, the more those cops ask me questions, the more I wish I bought them motherfucking books. <laughs>